Uh, record? Yep. Recording? Good. Good. Hey, my name is Willow. My name is Kaden. And this is our No Beats workshop. Uh, no Beat Tosses workshop. So, first thing we covered is the physics of a No Beat. More standard. Oh, yeah. Just simply having a beat, letting go. The purpose of this is to be as minimal as possible. This is a really nice point practice because it practices relinquishing as much of the control of our point to gravity as possible. Notice for about half the circle, not even touching it, right? So that's a really good exercise, especially doing this with both hands. Anytime you pick up your boy, it's really good to do this if you're a minimalist spinner who likes to have very little force on your boy. Nice thing to do is to take those moments where you have free hands, try to touch your body. Yep. Touch your chest, your head. Touch your friend. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, then we covered the different types of tosses. There's this sort of backwards toss. Notice the trajectory is going quite backwards. And the catch is penguin style. So the arm goes back, elbow straight, with the palm facing up. And then there's these forward style tosses. Where you come up under your armpit. Our favorite is definitely where you slap down on it with your palm down in order to catch it. But there's also two other types. One is open palm, this is Cyril's version. The other is over the back of the hand and landing in reverse grip. This. Okay, so with those different types of tosses, we have a lot of different possibilities. Uh, first thing we started covering was simply going split same on the wheel plane, doing either those backward tosses or those forward tosses. Looking at the different types and trying them out. So playing with both of those on a variety of planes, uh, the reverse one and split opposite of the wall plane here can also be done behind you like so. Both of these are wall plane. So have forward wall plane. This is called the doggy paddle. This is called the doggy paddle. And uh, <laughs> then you have that behind your body on the wall plane as well. There's a nice exercise, a plane bending exercise that will get you through all of those different permutations of those tosses. So you're going that forward style toss, starting by his body, bending until he gets in front of his body, doing the doggy paddle. He'll transition to those tosses, which is reverse style behind his back, and then he'll bend it until it's in front of his body. It'll take you through all of them. Okay, and then we started talking about sort of split up land on the wall plane. Doing these split up no beat tosses has all kinds of possibilities. There's various different body spaces. Yep. Can talk about it? Sure. Uh, the first one we looked at was behind the head froze. Like so. Uh, the most important part thereof is the catching position, which is your thumb pointed towards the ground. It lands you in a reverse grip, but due to the nature of no beats, it will be quickly modified by you making another throw and catching the other way. Uh, we also dealt with under the legs in no beats, wall plane, as well as behind the back. <laughs> And over the shoulder, as seen in the forward style no beat four. This brings us into building patterns with these. Uh, some of the patterns we covered was behind in front behind in behind in front in front, also known as a two one one. One one two. One one two. We have a convention of numbering different body spaces that helps kind of communicate these different patterns. So if you're interested in it, just send us a, a message. This is 112, then we have like a 611. 611, then the head. 424. We also went over Willow's favorite, is the 627. 726. Seven, Hardest one I've been able to find. That's why I practiced. Oh, wait, how do I? How do I do this? 
remember it now. What's your name? Yeah. Remember it. Secret. It's a mystery. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There it is. We also went over crossers and some other wheel plane goodness. So how it fundamentally works is your arms are crossed just like we would in a crosser and at any point the hand is on the bottom will throw, not be throw, but be catch as the hand moves to the top. You can repeat that process with both hands. And when you do it consistently, it uh, becomes this move here. So then we didn't go over earlier is something we, we affectionately call West Peden mode, which is where you throw from the top and catch on the bottom, which is way harder and also very cool. And uh, this is definitely really fun to do and split it off as well. Yes. Get a lot of doing it. Split up. Uh, there are also the wall plane versions of the crossers. Uh, so, same thing. The only thing difference here is these planes are going to be bent a little bit to make it possible. Um, and notice that he's spinning inwards on the tops. That's the better version of it. Yes. Outwards is also possible, it's just a little bit more wonky. Uh, yeah. Well, so we cover. Okay. Okay. We covered how to learn weaves. There's a lot of them, uh, but the best method is just to take that first thing we started with, send one over and catch underneath the other arm, then come back to the neutral position. Doing this weave where you go one side neutral position, then other side, is the first one to start with, both in forwards and backwards. Then eventually you can start incorporating behind the back weaves, which they are technically all the same that you would do normally, um, but in no beep beeps. <laughs> and a couple more nuggets. Uh, although there's a lot more, only what we covered the in the workshop was the like. Transitions. What? The transitions. Oh, transitions. Yeah. Oh, the transitions. There's the four styles uh, on the wall plane if you're spinning is split the same. There's this one where you're spinning under the armpits, uh, doing that forward style toss, and then tossing under the armpit with the other hands. The second one would be kind of the same thing except no armpit toss. Third one would be catching underneath the other arm with the neutral toss and then making that catch into a penguin catch. So you have the choice anytime you're spinning, uh, doing no beat tosses, to use those transition points. And in doing so, if you want to just say turn from one side to the other, and you can go through any one of those modes, or you can go through all four of those modes, or any combination of them. It's pretty cool. You also do the maximally awkward uh, under the armpit with penguin catch. Which I kind of hate, but you might not, so go for it. Um, other, so the nuggets, we went over, the first nugget we went over. Two hand, was, just a quick two hand. Uh, let me toss, let me toss. The way to learn that is to go through once at a time until it starts to get smooth and comfortable. And slowly increasing your numbers. One, two, three. <laughs> Um, we also went over the funky chicken, which is funky chicken is really hard. This it's that motion, motion right there. Right here, in order to drive it, you have to move your shoulders. Nice little concentric circles. <laughs> funky chicken. Someone else, please do that. Please learn it. That'd be, that'd be good. Then we can high five. Uh, yeah, mini high fives. High five. Yeah, so our goal basically as an overarching statement, like no beat tosses, is to we usually try to just spin like normal, flowing, moving, doing things, um, and with the added challenge of just making every toss a no beat toss. We want to be able to move around at our leisure, explore different hand positions, etc., all while doing no beat tosses. That's something to try. So as you practice these, you become more affluent. 
start trying to move around and uh, incorporating them in your flow. That's what it's all about. Yes. I'm quite fond of the phrase 50% 50% hands free. Yes, that's how I how I sum up our staying here. So that, that's our workshop. No beats. No beats for the win.